When Joe DeCamp pulls his $33,000 all-electric Nissan Leaf into his Carlsbad garage, he's basically pulling into a filling station. On the wall is a new electric vehicle charging unit, a distant cousin of the gas pump. The $1,200 unit delivers a 220-volt charge to the car's batteries. Okay, so this is a 100% electric uh, engine. Very, very different from a traditional uh, internal combustion engine. All electric, there's, there's no transmission. There's basically a 80-kilowatt uh, uh, AC synchronous motor down there. His wife still drives a gas-powered car, but DeCamp hasn't stopped at a gasoline filling station since his electric car was delivered several weeks ago. In fact, he grins when he drives by and sees the high prices. I was spending uh, 70, $74 a week to fill my uh, uh, SUV up every single week. So that's $290 a, uh, a month for just, just gas, just fuel. DeCamp figures he's paying a bit more than $17 for the electricity to do the same amount of driving. He knows that because his computer connects wirelessly to the car. You can track uh, very detailed your, your usage. Uh, this is pulled up for one day, uh, the 29th of April. I traveled 39 miles. That's a typical uh, daily commute for me. 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, electrical consumption, 9.2 kilowatts, travel time about an hour. The car has a trove of new technology, including a smartphone app that can control air conditioning, charging, and other functions remotely. The Leaf looks and drives like a gas-powered car, but it can't go as far. DeCamp's car has a range of about 80 miles. That's enough for his commute, but that's not enough for everyone. Joseph Gottlieb works at an Escondido company that makes batteries for all sorts of electric vehicles. He acknowledges that range anxiety is a major obstacle for some. A lot of people believe in, in this country you can drive anywhere you want at any time. If I want to load in my car, I can drive to Vegas, I can drive from here to Florida. I've got that freedom. And so they feel that when you've got something that's going to limit your range, it's a, taking away some freedom of yours. Changing expectations and better batteries are the solution. He says lithium batteries tucked under the passenger compartment allow the Leaf to look just like a regular car. So running up underneath uh, all along to the back side of the car is where the lithium batteries reside in this vehicle. And unlike the Nissan Leaf, the batteries in this older vehicle are sitting on top of the electric motor. They're golf cart batteries, and as you can see, there are several of them there, and also more right here. 24, in fact, and they weigh 2,400 pounds. The Nissan LEAF wouldn't be possible without lithium battery technology. Better batteries with longer driving ranges may convince even more consumers to buy electric. It's a prospect that both excites and worries San Diego Gas and Electric's Jim Avery. Virtually every large automobile manufacturing has announced that they're coming out with an electric vehicle in the next several years. 200 electric-only cars are already in San Diego, and Avery expects 10 times as many to be on the road by the end of the year. That quick growth brings challenges. In reality, every single car that comes in is about the equivalent of three quarters of a new home. So we have to plan for the charging infrastructure just like we plan for the addition of a new home in our system. The infrastructure has to be there and we have to have the energy to provide you to charge your car. SDG&E is experimenting with very low power rates if drivers charge their cars between midnight and 5 a.m. That would put virtually no impact on the local power grid. But the stakes are high. If significant numbers of electric car owners tap into the electric grid during peak hours in the middle of the day, that could force SDG&E to pay for potentially billions of dollars in infrastructure upgrades. <laughs>